Hey YouTube, it's Casey from CaseyFriday.com and I want to give you another view of the electrical in the tiny house. I realize not much has changed, but um, a little bit has and it's actually almost done. So if you take a look over here at the door, you can see this is the door frame and here's the wiring with nice uh, wire staples in the wall. You can get these at Lowe's and they hammer into the wall and they have that nice plastic that uh, keeps the wires protected without stripping the conduit that's holding, that's covering them. And this goes over here to where the main breaker box is going to be. So all of this is ready to have the breaker box installed and I'm actually going to be doing that very soon. I've purchased, I purchased one of them and I had too many slots because we only have three circuits and the one that I bought had eight slots for fuses. So that was a little bit overkill for this house. And if I want to expand on the outside of the house, I'm probably just going to end up doing uh, another lug outside of the house. So this is one of the lights on the inside, and you haven't seen that before. I've got this circular fixture, and these are rated to hold a bit more weight than the rectangular ones are. Um, in new construction, with my nailing these into the wall, I don't think it's really going to make much of a difference. Um, but because the, the things that we're going to be putting on the wall are going to be so light, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. Um, the first outlet is behind there, behind all this junk in here. We had to remove all the insulation in order to run the wires through the wall. And you've seen that before, so you don't need to see that again. Here's a second outlet, and then it goes over here to the third outlet, which is behind some of this uh, Reflectix. And then up above this window, I put in another light box, so that's where another light will go. And then over here, I've got this double switch that you've seen before, and it's nicely wired and uh, stapled to the walls. And then this, comes over here to that outlet down there and the wire from that outlet comes straight up to this box that I just put in and this will be a box that right here is where the air conditioner is going to go so this light will be next to that and I think the air conditioner is only going to be about three feet wide so there's plenty of space here but this light will be controlled by that light switch um, over here next to the door You've got the porch light um, wires up here, and I'm trying to research exactly how it works to get um, basically a reverse box, because you know this box comes 3 eighths of an inch out uh, from the stud right here, because the drywall that we're going to use will be 3 eighths of an inch. So that should make this bit, this electrical box, flush with the drywall, and then this um, actual switch will be screwed in, and it'll sort of butt up against the drywall. And then we'll have a fascia plate that'll go on top of that. And down here is the where the external outlet's going to be outside. And I just purchased this at Lowe's. This is a low-profile outdoor. Um, some of them are called bubble covers, but this one basically you can see it's got that little accordion bit where you can pull it out and it'll keep it uh, watertight. Well, water resistant. It's not exactly watertight. If there's a flood, there's going to be water in there. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I don't think we're going to need um, all this space. And I think I'm actually going to get another one of these that's not going to have an outlet, but it'll have just a hole for running Ethernet into the house because the land that we're moving to has a cabin that's got fiber internet to it. Um, so I don't want to put a cable modem in this house, but I do want to run Ethernet, uh, probably Cat 6 into the house so that I can get high-speed internet networking going from the current modem in the cabin into this house at any time. Um, and this is something else I just put in. This is an outlet that will be behind the stove. We didn't have one of these planned initially, but then I kind of thought, you know, who knows what we're going to want to do. I might as well put one in there now while the walls are open in case we want to put anything down there. But the camping stove that we got, I'm going to build a shelf that's going to sort of just be a cutout in the counter and then the camping stove will go right there. And I'll post a link to the camping stove so you can see exactly which one it is. Um, it's got a stove and an oven, miniature obviously. And it takes a D-cell battery and propane so it doesn't need an outlet. But you know, if we ever decide to do a, uh, an induction top or something like that, um, we could always plug it into this outlet, but maybe we'll want another one just for who knows down there. So um, this is the wire running in. Like I said before, the orange wire is 10 gauge wire and that's for the air conditioning unit so it gets all the possible amps it needs, lots of clean power. Um, this will be the recirculating vent for the oven and stove. And in the bathroom, I still haven't looked up 
this outlet here has two black leads coming out of it that's for the switch on here. So this switch is going to activate the fan and the light. Um, it'll be the light right there and the fan right here. It's going to activate them both at the same time. I'm just not quite sure why they have two um, black wires coming out of it because it says it's the switch output and it says one of them's line and one of them's load. So I just need to look up um, the terminology for what that means. I'm pretty sure line means coming from the breaker box and load means going to whatever the load is, literally. Um, but I think they both do the same thing. So I just, I haven't hooked them up. You can see I still have this red auxiliary wire here that's going to be going to both of those. And I haven't hooked that up yet, but I'm sure just hooking up both of them to that or one of them to that is going to achieve what I want. Um, and then here's the wire going up to the loft on the driver's side. And here's the passenger side going up to the loft. And you can see out at this front window, there is the trailer hitch down there. And I'm going to be toying with some ideas on what to put on that trailer hitch, like uh, some sort of propane hoist or something like that. One of my uh, geeky friends has some ideas for some things we can do on that. And I love looking at this since you got the combo of yellow and orange cabling. Um, like I said before, you notice that I left some slack here in this wire because I read online if you ever need to redo one of these. Um, although both of these outlets, the GFCI and these nice designer switches, um, have the terminals where you just stick the wire straight into it and screw it in. And you can kind of see that in there. I didn't actually have to wrap the wires around these contacts. They just uh, went straight in and then the screw tightened onto them. So I'm not going to need to do any restripping of wires, but if there's ever anything crazy that needs to go on, then um, you can just get some more wire down and from the bottom push it up. And uh, that will be easy to do repairs on if necessary. And then here's an outlet that will power our fridge. And I'm still not quite sure. I think we're going to have one of those little mini kind of dorm fridges. Um, but we might get a bigger one. Just depends on what's out there and what's low profile enough and what will match with the storage area that we want right here. And, you know, how low profile that is, etc. So there's where the air conditioner goes up. And I just have it kind of running into the loft. But it's, it's this wire right here. So that's going to be the air conditioner wire. And here will be the kitchen light. One thing I can't decide here yet is if I want to put an electrical box up in this kitchen ceiling area and then we'll put some ceiling material on it and then have the light coming down and maybe do one of those like three light across fixtures or if I want to put it in the wall and just angle it down. Um, so I've got to kind of figure out what I'm going to do there. You can see I have some notes that I've written on the 2x4s because why not? Because they're going to be covered up later. Um, so there's the outlet that'll power the propane water heater on demand and that will be mounted on this bathroom frame wall wall frame and that is pretty much it for the electrical so let's take a look at something else that's pretty exciting that I just finished when we walk out onto the porch you'll notice it actually looks like a porch because I finished siding the thing so I didn't side the roof area of it but I did side all of this, and I even went down, jumped down here, and did the area underneath this decking here, which involves some 45 degree angle cuts and a lot of retries to get it right. Well, two retries, so not too much. And then I got this side too, which is all good to go underneath there. And it's really nice that this came out, um, well, that I measured it so that the thickness, how far this comes out, is just right here at the peak of how far out each of the pieces of siding goes. So we'll be putting trim that'll come down here, just some hardy plank trim. It'll come all the way down and make this look really, really nice. So if you want a little panoramic view, here's the left side of the door. And I know it looks better with the door shut, but just bear with me here. And we finally put these two pieces of decking in. Um, I just I ran out the first time I installed the decking, and that was probably a year ago and uh, finally put those on. And so you can see that this is a very nice fit. It's tongue and groove. So this piece was the hardest to get in because I had to slide it into the groove and then push it back and kind of snap it in place. But um, I used furring strips on these to push them out a little bit from the wall so that um, since these pieces of siding are a little bit uneven with how far out they come, I just wanted to push it off an even amount and then we can put some trim to cover that up. And then we'll be putting a piece of hardy siding along the top of this um, 
where you see those bird's notches coming out of the roof to make it all look the same. And then um, this same material you see here is gonna be going this way across the porch roof rafters, but we don't have the drywall in yet and I want the roof to be drywalled and I want the drywall guys to be able to reach up in between here. This is just a piece of insulation. It can be easily moved. And I want them to be able to uh, get all the torque they need on their tools to get the drywall on the ceiling. And then I will cover this up with the same southern yellow pine tongue and groove and then put insulation in it and then put something on the top to make a sort of storage area floor up there. Um, outside of the house, not much has changed. Um, but you can tell that this is going to look a lot better once I get some trim on the side of that, get the hardy trim. And I've really just been waiting because if you see at the top, I haven't done that top piece of hardy siding. I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to slide it up there and try to make everything sort of sealed. And this is another piece that just needs one more piece as well, but I wasn't sure I was going to slide it up there because um, building a tiny house for the first time, I've learned that there are some things you need to take into consideration like fascia boards up on the bird's notches. And I didn't think about that, so this design and build is going to have to take care of that after the roof has gone on. Most people probably take care of that before the roof goes on. So the only other thing to show you besides this lovely porch siding which will be stained and look ultra modern and chic and everything is on the front we'll be doing some sort of maybe a propane tank hoist or something right there. I don't really want to build an entire cabinet or structure because this is not even where the uh, breaker box is going to go. The breaker box will be on that side of the house at the end. Um, not the breaker box, but just the lug that's got the main switch and where the electricity actually, the wiring comes into the house will be on that side. And then obviously this is where the, the panel is on the inside. So that's the tiny house.